What an honor. This is so exciting. I have been watching Trump rallies from the very first one. And to be part of one, folks, I'll tell you, it's, it's the night of a lifetime. You know, if it's just backstage. You all are so great. This thing is it's electric in here, folks. You people at home. This is unreal. I am so hoping that in a few short minutes you start chanting something else. Maybe you'll do. No. <laughs> I was just I was just talking to people backstage, and and somebody said that uh, the president and all of us have been labeled by some Democrats in the media divisive. That's divisive. The Democrats haven't even accepted they lost the election in 2016. That's what this is all about. It's serious stuff. All of this. I mean, for crying out loud, folks, you know, you look at what happened the last two years. For two years ago, year and a half, every day, newspaper, every newspaper, New York Times, Washington Post, anonymous intelligence sources, confirming that Trump colluded with Putin to steal the election. There's no evidence for it. Zilch, zero, not it. It didn't happen. It was made up. Hillary Clinton colluded with Russia. Hillary Clinton rigged an election. the message. They got the message. These, these rallies, I have to tell you, they are the envy of official Washington. You realize there isn't a single elected official in either party who could do what this is tonight. Other than Donald Trump. There's no one. No one. And they're jealous. They are envious. This isn't supposed to happen. You people are supposed to love them, not Trump. And so guess what? They want to get in on it. Bill and Hillary Clinton and their national stadium tour. Talking about, have you seen Obama? He's been stumping down in Florida where I live. He's drawing crowds of 1,000 people, 2,000 people. Joe Biden can't fill a phone booth because he's looking for somebody to punch out. incredible. And you know, a little history, when I first started watching the campaign, I watched the president and his family come down the escalator in June of 2015, and I heard his opening remarks, and I said, this is, there's no way. And then I saw the first polls, and then I saw the first one of these, and I said, he's going to win, because he has a connection. There is no other politician with a connection to voters like this. Nobody has it. And Washington can't stand it. I'm not kidding. The establishment cannot stand it at all. <laughs> now, folks, in, in, all, in all candor, you know, we, um, <clears throat> we're a nation great nation at risk in a dangerous world, and much of the risk that we face is internal. Well, you know, it, it's like they tell me that we're divisive and so forth, and they haven't accepted the fact that they lost the election. So now, let's take, look at the caravan just for an example. They think, they think that the president doesn't want the caravan, you don't want the caravan because we're racist or sexist. Not it at all. It's an issue of law. Why should we stand aside and let people break the law? They're... What's so hard about this? 
We just stand aside, let them violate the law? It is, it, it, we, we get all these labels thrown at us, and we love our country, and we want the best for everybody in it. We want the best for our kids and our grandkids. We want everybody to be great. We want everybody to experience the American dream. It was, you know, I'm from here, I'm from Cape Girardeau, and... and <laughs> It was, now don't take this the wrong way, 50 years ago was the first time I was, I was 16, first time I was told that I wasn't good enough to succeed in radio. Now what, don't, don't misunderstand, we're all told this. We all know how to fail. We don't need to go to the library to find books on how to fail because we all know how to do it. We don't, you'll, you'll never go to the library and find a book, Great Moderates in American History or Great Committees in American History. Donald Trump wants America to be great again. And it's not a slogan, it's an objective. And it is... <laughs> I love you all too. I really... This crowd is just... I asked the president if I could speak for 30 minutes. You know, I'm, I've got a 10 minute limit here. He said, no. He can't wait to come out and talk to you. It's, it's an amazing thing that Donald Trump has done. You know, Donald Trump doesn't need any of the grief that he gets. Donald Trump doesn't need any of Donald Trump could do and has done whatever he wants. He's one of the most successful people in America, and he doesn't need this. He doesn't need to put up with the abuse. He doesn't need to put up with the... But he does. He does because he sincerely believes that America is headed in the wrong track, and it needs to be put back on the right track. They say, they say we're divisive. They say we're divisive. But it's, we're not divisive, we're defending an America that has strayed from our founding. Nothing to do with race, nothing to do with gender, nothing to do with any of these identifies, identity politics labels, it has to do with culture. It has to do with protecting and defending the Constitution. It has, pure and simple. So I think it's, it's a wonderful thing that you've come out here tonight. I could not be more honored to be part of one of these rallies. You know, the bond, folks, I'm telling you, the bond that exists between you and everybody else that's been to a Trump rally is something that, that politicians envy and the people in Washington really haven't taken the time to understand why you voted for Trump. They just think you're stupid for doing so. And, they, and there's so much to learn about why you have. There's so much to learn about the potential greatness for America to learn why you're here, why you support Trump. But they just chalk it up to the fact, well, you're not educated. Well, you're poor. Yeah, you're this or that. And you're angry. You're not angry. You love people. You want your country to be the greatest it can be. And you finally got somebody willing to help you do it. Somebody to stand up for you. Somebody to stand with you. We, in certain, are, are hanging by a thread. Do you realize, folks, there is nobody, I, don't, I should say nobody, there, 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 there are some on the Republican side who would attempt to do what the president's done, and done. But for the most part, there's nobody who would do what Donald Trump has done. Nobody would buck the system. Nobody would take it on. You, if, he, if he hadn't run, who among anybody in politics could you have glommed onto to have this kind of chance to make America great again? There wasn't anybody that was actually standing for this. Everybody gets caught up in what's going on in Washington, inside the establishment. You were being ignored, you weren't being listened to, you weren't being paid any attention to it. Even now, the real anger at Trump is actually aimed at you for having elected it. But he doesn't need this. He puts up with this, and thank God he does. Because he's indefatigable. The man simply doesn't get tired. He doesn't wear out. 
For those of you, no, no, indef- there's somebody, Maria Linda here, indefatigable, doesn't get tired. Just keeps going and so forth. Without any further ado, folks, thank you so much. It's been great. It's great to be here, be part of this. Raise the roof. Here he comes, the president of the United States, Donald.